Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, we're a little behind this week in our work, but uh, if you, that doesn't mean we're not going to stop and appreciate some beautiful, beautiful things going on in our city. And if you're within the sound of my voice, guess what? You must be in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. Uh, you know, if uh, you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because let's face it, uh, you're listening. You can hear me. You are within the sound of my voice. And if you are, hit subscribe, hit the like button, give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our NC YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we'd absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the Instagram, we're on the Letterboxd, we're on the TikTok, I even think we're on the Tumblr for all sorts of fun updates. And fine, at In The Seats, of course. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay his visit over to In The Seats, in the seats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large, because, you know, uh, if we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. And even though our our friends uh, down south with the, the actors and the writers are on strike now for getting equitable compensation, which we fully and wholeheartedly support, uh, there's still plenty to watch. There's still plenty to talk about. So please pay us a visit on this episode. We got a fun one. We got a real interesting one because tomorrow uh, here in uh, our fair city, it is the Art of Documentary Film Festival. It is the inaugural one, and, and it's uh, it it was born out of a pretty special thing. It's uh, born out of sort of an online school that had students, and now they're uh, now they're showing their stuff. It's it's a it's an all day event where you're going to see short films from a uh, from a twenty four hour short uh, contest, but also there's. Uh, there's great in conversations with award-winning filmmakers, uh, and there's yet another screening of a of a Oscar-winning short, along with the director in the house, and it is from. Uh, uh, it's a multi event. It's good. I mean, tickets are forty nine dollars, but it's it's a full day. If you are a documentary person, if you love cinema in general, go to the Innes Town Hall Theater tomorrow. Pack a lunch spend the day because it's a fantastic event but honestly before that we had the unique pleasure of sitting down with one of the founders of the art of documentary uh school as well as the festival filmmaker in his own right mr michael del monte and we talked uh so much about uh the origins of the fest the origins of the school the state of the business and so so very much more and uh that's about it but you know like i said if you're not doing anything tomorrow, get down to the Art of Documentary Film Festival Saturday, July 15th, here in Toronto at Innes Town Hall Theatre. Doors open at 10.30, and that is a plethora of uh, documentary filmmaking, documentary conversations, and a lot of fun, fun stuff. If you are interested in film and making film, it is the inaugural Art of Documentary Film Festival, which is over at the Innes Town Hall Theatre. Get your tickets, enjoy it, but first enjoy our talk with Michael because it's a darn, darn good one. Oh, please, thank you, man. I mean, you know, obviously, just to kick it off, like, thank you for the time. I appreciate this. And I mean, and congrats on, I mean, you're basically launching a, a school with this event. Yes. Yeah, that's what we found out. <laughs> we, it started as an online course uh, um, during COVID, kind of my partner and I, he was a director, filmmaker as well. And and uh, it was kind of going to be a one-off, like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to get into the whole online thing. But lo and behold, you know, three years later, over four thousand students. We've had students get deals on Netflix, getting into some big festivals. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got our work cut out for us now. We we really want to see this grow into a legitimate online film academy, as as it is. And we're just kind of taking each step, each year, taking a few steps forward. And now this festival is really our first in-person event so it's exciting 
So, I mean, what made you want to make sort of this first step? I mean, what, I mean, I can imagine any more than just sort of the, the thrill of, you know, students getting to see their stuff on the big screen. Yeah. I mean, my, my experience, like I've done five feature docs, right. And so I've been to a lot of festivals and it's just, it still is a really exciting environment being around creatives who have, uh, and then the distributors, people, you know, people are reviewing films, like just bringing everyone together. And so we, you know, we want to get there. This is our first, it's a one day festival. But for me, it was just, it's such an exhilarating experience seeing something you labor over for so long on a big screen with an audience, even if the audience is whatever, 50 people, it, it's, it's when the lights go low, you know, everyone <laughs> loves movies. It's, right. it's really exciting to see your work there. And I think docs have just, you know, we're so used to stream them at two times speed on our phones and watching them on our computers. It's, it, it was just something we wanted to, we wanted to really show, help our students fall in love with, with real cinema. No, I mean, from your perspective, would you, would you define documentary as almost, a gateway entry for people who who want to learn how to be filmmakers because i mean i'm always kind of fascinated by yeah, it. it's like sort of the way Ian always seems to be docs you know that was that was my goal um that was my goal it, was, it, it is a bit of an it's an easier gateway into into movies you know technology's lower it poses its own challenges of course finding a good character at the right time of their life and a good story is not easy but it is easier to hit record and edit and whatnot. And a lot of our students find themselves in that place. Um, so we do have a lot of students who would be coming into this as um, maybe an entry into the scripted world. And in fact, two of our panelists, um, uh, partners, Shasha and Rich, they, they had a, their Toronto couple and they had a film uh, Scarborough at TIFF a couple years ago, but I've known them from the doc, doing the doc circuit with them. So they did make that transition. So we're going to hear from them kind of how, how they did that. But you know, I've been my, my mentor, Derek C. in France is a big scripted director, and I've been working with him on some projects. And as I've been seeing the scripted world, it poses its own challenges. And and personally, I I've kind of now been a little shy to go into it. So I'm staying in the doc world myself. Uh, but I think for us, we will eventually expand probably into, you know, showing students who want to go into more scripted narrative driven content, uh, how to do that. No, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, because obviously, like you said, this is the first live event. You've selected a really interesting slate of films. You've got people talking for the whole day. But I mean, how do you narrow it down? If you've had, if you've got that many students, I can imagine you had a ton of people sort of wanting to submit and wanting to to be a part of this event. So, well, yeah, this event specifically came out. We realized we could do it because we hold this competition. Uh, it's called a one day doc contest, and it's really out of the nature of true documentaries, which you know you watch films whatever, like, like hoop dreams or whatever they take years to make often. But we wanted our students to have an assignment where they just got something done because, you know, there's a big imposter syndrome. I think being a filmmaker, a lot, a lot of people have a hard time calling themselves that, you know, it takes a long time to make a feature doc for instance. So we had this contest where they had 24 hours to shoot a doc. And then I think it was a two weeks to edit it. And so we've been doing that for about a year and a half and the films have been fantastic and we got 107 film submissions this year. And that was kind of, they inspired us just to say, you know, at least we could show five or six of these, which shows how hard filmmaking is, but we can show these to the public. Um, so, you know, that was kind of our inspiration. So the first, the the, the first, um, our morning program at the festival, we're showing five of the one day doc films, kind of our top selections, our team, they all went through them. We highlighted them and uh, chose five that we think the audience will really enjoy. For sure. For sure. And I mean, I love that you brought up just sort of the nature of imposter syndrome, sort of especially in this business, because I mean, hell, I'm a film critic and I have imposter syndrome some days. You know <laughs> what I mean? What like yeah. was one of the main drives for, for you guys starting sort of the school and having an event like this was just to just to be able to sort of shine to the world that, no, hey, listen, you can overcome yes. that hump. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know who the heck I, I was nobody. And then all of a sudden I was, you know, down in Austin winning best film award and best audience award and then hot docs. And, you know, you're winning these festivals and you're like, I just had a really good character. I had a great team around me. I had a little vision, but really like, what does it take to make a good doc? And I think, you know, filmmaking, especially when you get to scripted world, there's this prestige, right. there's this, you know, this, this elusiveness with it. But I think docs, it's a lot 
you know, there's a lot of catching lightning in a bottle. You know, they're, they're, they're being in the right time, the right place with the right character, the right topic. Is that going to hit at festivals that year? You know, and so for us, I think, yes, exactly what you said. We, we really wanted to do this to sort of demystify the the filmmaking experience and say, listen, you come from a particular place in the world. You know, you've got lived experience. You've you've made choices. You've had good things, bad things happen to you. The geography around you influences the way you see the world. And how do you bring those things into filmmaking? You know, and I and I think that's that was kind of our initial approach was let's teach the nuts and bolts of filmmaking, but then teach the students how to bring themselves into that process. And that's what we're starting to see. You know, the the first year was kind of them getting their feet wet, learning, you know, how to assemble a team, how to how to raise some money, how to how to create a process to shoot. What gear do you use? You know, do you do two camera, one camera? Looking at all these technical elements. Now, as our students are maturing, now it's much more about finding their philosophy, their voice. What themes do they like to focus on, you know? And so that's that's kind of how it's evolving now. And, I mean, that's so interesting because, I mean, you're right. I mean, so much of, I can imagine, you know, the documentary film world and and being a documentarian is is, is just being able to sort of see the world in front of you and go, okay, that's the good idea. You know what I mean? Because, yes. I mean, there's such noise these days. Yeah, yeah, on well, these days more than ever, it, it's tough. It, it filmmaking is tough nowadays, and I, I'm not. I don't. We never lie to our students and try to tell them that this is a good career path. <laughs> you know, this. Um, you know, an agent I was talking to at UTA said, you know, that still the only genre, the, the main genre that every streamer will look, look for is true crime, right? True crime serial. Killer. So if if you got a doc in that space, you might make some money. Otherwise, it's a tough road. It's a very tough road these days. I think what was the stat I heard out of Sundance? They had one film got acquired out of Sundance this year out of, you know, the hundreds, if not more that were submitted. Right. And so it's it's not a great business model, but it is a beautiful thing. And I think we promote our students just to try to, you know, go through the process, find that story that's in front of you that you you should be the one to tell you know, figure out a way to host screenings in your town. I mean, that's how I started. I, I was from Guelph, Ontario. And, you know, we were we were just using the bookshelf cafe and getting 100 people into the seats, selling the DVD Blu-ray after. Yeah. And it was awesome. You know, it's great. It was great. And uh, so we're trying to encourage a little more grassroots. Uh, not everyone's obviously going to be, you know, making it onto the the Oscar stage. But um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful process that we just were trying to help share with those who want to learn it. Now, I mean, where did that impetus for, for you and for Mark come to, to want to pay it forward? Because I mean, especially these days, like in the business and on so many levels, it really feels like we've kind of lost that desire to, to pay it forward and get the next generation ready. Like I'm not seeing a lot of that as much as I thought there was or the, yeah. maybe there was years ago kind of thing. Like what was the drive for you to sort of want to pay it forward? Well, uh, you know, altruistically, like there was the reality of there being COVID and right. that we did and we did see it as an opportunity to to make a few bucks. I mean, that that's the truth, you know, because both of us are commercial directing. You're directing things of course, that you don't right. love. You know, it's all these commercials that are pretty meaningless. Anyone who's a filmmaker knows that. They've got to buy their time back doing other kind of crap jobs. And so for us, it was like, hey, this is something we love. You know, he had a YouTube audience that seemed receptive to the idea. Let's take the chance. It was really, though, after the first we, – we didn't even think we were going to continue it. We did our first launch and we're like a few hundred people bought it. You know, we're going to have six Zoom calls and then we're going to that's going to be it. But six months later, you know, we just sort of grown with our students six months after we opened the doors the first time. They're like, hey, we'd love a more advanced uh, course that goes more in depth. And and we we have really just grown with our students. Um, we've been fortunate enough not to have to take on our other jobs because this is just so much more meaningful. Like, I can't tell you how much better it is to do feet. We have something called feedback hours for our advanced students where every two weeks I watch a scene of yours, or I talk about, you know, how to find a producer or what distribution companies to look at, or, you know, and, and, and I get to, I've been able to have, see students go through from inception all the way to festivals. Um, and so, 
Yeah, it's there's no roadmap for filmmaking. You you're right. Like, you know, you could find a mentor. You could yeah. try climbing the rungs of you know starting to PA on some sets that way, or you you know get a unicorn and get this crazy story and somehow do it that way. But I guess I guess for us it was us. It was I mean I was making films for ten years pretty much before I started this, and no, I think for Mark and I it was just why not like why wouldn't you show this process like you know it's good for everybody so it it almost feels like you guys have built something that could turn into a meta moment for yourselves where someone finds an idea for their next film from your event yeah we hope so i mean we we just started introducing aod funding um in march so yeah like we're we're in the business now like you know now that our courses help make us the money but now with that money we're going to lose money on the festival but that's okay you know, we're losing money on the festival. We're, we're going to be putting money into films. We've got, uh, we've already funded, I think, three or four films. You know, they're between ten to $30,000 each. But that's out of our, that's, you know, money that could go to us. So that's, that to us is the big vision is, you know, the courses act as a way for people. You get a lot of people who might be interested, want to learn a little bit. But with that, we can grow it into some more interesting things. In-person events, you know, uh, um, yeah, funding, streaming things like that. So yeah, it's, it's a nice business model because I know that a lot of festivals are under corporate pressure a lot. You know, they've got, they've got sponsors, they've got different things they have to answer to. So for us, it's pretty unique situation that, um, yeah, we can, we can do this how we'd like. How has the streaming boom kind of changed, not just the business model for like a school like this, but I mean, even you sort of independently as a filmmaker, (laughs) Because, I mean, on one end, like you say, you know, okay, on one end, everyone just wants true crime right now, bye, bye, bye. But at the other end, there is such a swath of content on so many different levels. Like, is it a good thing? Because, A, if you make something, at least I've got a chance at getting an audience. Or do you feel the pressure to be, to fall into sort of the quote unquote algorithm that some of these bigger, you know, streamers kind of have? It's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think you got to know what you're, I try to tell my students, like you guys need to be honest with yourself in terms of what you're making. I've made films and projects for broadcasters. It's what they wanted. And I, and, and those could get me a paycheck, but then I've also made films that they were what I wanted and they got acknowledged by some great people, but they didn't get on Netflix, right. Or whoever, um, and it's funny because my first two features both got license deals from Netflix. And and now it's just such a different game where they are, yeah, they are sort of, they've got their algorithm. I, I mean, I think to answer your question, is more content overall good? I, I think it gives more filmmakers a bit of a, a, a hopeful outlook, but they're not, most of these streamers are not, they're, they're not um, acquiring, they're, they're, they're commissioning. Right. So, you know, I try to tell them, you do these first few projects, you're probably not going to get them picked up, but get them better, get them some festivals, get them reviewed, you know, learn, get better. And then when you've got that right idea, then we help you find that producer who's got the relationship there. And then, yeah, maybe you can get a shot, right? But yeah, I think it's just shifting kind of your mindset that how we used to think. You go, you get some government funding or some grants or some private funding, you go to festivals and then it gets picked up at a festival. It just doesn't happen like that right now. Yeah. So, you, you know, I think, I think the process of filmmaking now is, you know, you gotta, you gotta have to get a little bit of a name for yourself, get a few accolades, and then maybe the, maybe the streamers will look at you a little more carefully if you've got that right idea, but the challenge no, I mean, I'm kind of curious for you as a filmmaker, and I mean, I can imagine this is a question that would come up with students. How do you sort of sift through, like, mm. not because obviously you want people to review your film, but at the same time, you're going to, you can either get obsessive and read, you know, every comment on Letterboxd, or you can go yeah. to certain people and know, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, or that guy knows yeah. what he's talking about. Like, how do you kind of sift through that? That's a good question. I mean, you know, um, I th- in my experience, you, you've got to have a few good friends. I like, it, 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 like truthfully, I, I think somebody who's not afraid to tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I, I think, and that's rare. Like, you, you think you might have that in your life, but you probably don't. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have two or three people like that in my life who will say, you know, what I need to hear, not what I want to hear, 
or you know what I what I'd like to hear. And so I, I we we have something as well in AOD. It's called small groups. Um, it's included if you if you purchase a course where you get you can get set up into a group of ten or twelve. And we're trying to kind of foster that type of environment where, you know, it's it's completely honest. It's 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 meant to be constructive and helpful, but it is trying to give you that, yeah, that unbiased opinion, so that you're not just screening your films for your friends and family, uh, and always getting positive feedback. And it, so, um, yeah, for myself, I know that that's been that that's definitely been key in terms of my filmmaking journey is having a couple people whose opinions I, I really value. Well, I was just looking up our old review for Transformers. So we were, we were positive on your film. So I just wanted to make <laughs> good. <it. laughs> and even, you know, I guess, I guess it's like, even if you're not um, Transformer was fortunate enough, it didn't have, I don't think there, I remember reading a couple, uh, that was when I would, I would read stuff, but it, it was, it did pretty well. But I, I, I think, that's what I'm trying to do with our more advanced students in AOD is if you do the work, if you do the work, you know, in pre-production, when you're thinking about what themes you want to focus on, you, you know, you got to be able to walk away with this stuff with your head held high, knowing that you made the right choices right. while you were, while you were making it. You know, I think, I think if, if you've got too many, the, the film I most unhappy with is the one I had too many voices in and I was trying to follow that algorithm. You know, it was for a broadcaster and it was and it was just like trying to appease, appease them. And it was it came off being my least favorite thing because I, it just didn't involve myself as much. And I think in filmmaking, it's so personal. Um, and so if you can just honestly say you've you've thought about it, you've been thoughtful, you, you made these choices and, you know, there's nothing to be upset about. You you made the choices that you thought were best and, you know, you, you can't do anything but do that. Is that the difference between knowing you've made a good film and knowing you've made a good enough film? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think I think once a good enough film is probably something that's watchable. You know, a good I can film. Imagine those situations come up, right? Yeah. If it's deadlines. If it's for a broadcaster, it's like okay, it's not where I want it's it. It's good to, enough. It's close it's enough. It's good enough. Yeah. No, that and I don't do them anymore because it was just they still take a year to make, they still right. make nine, nine months. It's not like, it's not like a commercial that you're doing in a month or two. So like some TV docs, it's like, they still take almost a year of your life and, and you got to put a lot into them. And you said it really well there. I finished it feeling like, I think this is good enough. Broadcaster says this is good enough. Ratings are good enough that you're just, <laughs> you're not going to go very far on good enough though. I, I, you know, I think it requires, it requires, you know, some, some real um i i guess some reflective i mean for me it's just the time it's the time to think about what is that right idea in that story and it's like have we watered it have we plowed it have we just have we done it properly it's, it's all process for me filmmaking and so if you've fully gone through the process i again i think that that's the most rewarding part it's, it's when you start deviating from the process it's like you start painting by number, you get the same colorist, you get the same score, you get the same, you know, we're going to do these two shoot days. It's like so formulaic. It, and that's what I see on that. A lot of these streamers have just defaulted to these yeah, painted by number doc series. And it's like, can see it. You, you can, I think, and I think the audience has seen it too, frankly. No, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's the struggle of the creative, right? I mean, it's obviously, you know, we all want the check to clear at the end of the day, but you know, if that's all it's about, then it's not fulfilling and it's not rewarding. And I mean, I can imagine that's definitely a hard line to 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 teach and to sort of understand how to navigate unless you've been in the middle. Yeah. Well, that's that's why one of our modules, one of our courses, uh, it's a business course because you know we 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 are again very honest of how bad the business model in filmmaking is. It's possible, but, you know, at best you get an overall deal for a few years, right. you know, a good situation, you get your film funded and you, you make some money for a year. But in my experience, filmmakers need to have some business model. For me, that was having retainer clients, commercial clients that I could buy two weeks. I worked for them two weeks a month and then I made my films two weeks a month. And so we, that's something we're very, uh, 
we stress a lot on our students is you guys need to come up with a business model, whether that's you're on YouTube, whether you're doing witty, uh, wedding videography, whether you want to work with an agency, whatever it is, you need some financial model or else the it's going to, your creative is just going to get run to the run to the gears. Cause you're just not, you know, yeah, you're just, you're just always going to, you're never going to have that margin to go in out and just think and experiment and, and take chances. So yeah, it's we're we're very big believers on that to try to get our students help them make money somewhere else because they're probably not going to be making it in film. Sad, but unfortunately accurate. Now, I mean, just to put a bow on this, I mean, I'm kind of curious because obviously the event is this weekend. Uh, you're showing the films. You're going to have talks and people there. If someone's looking at this, not like coming in a little blind, how do you sell it? How do you try to get that person in the door? For the festival, yeah, for the festival, I think I think this is really a, a film festival that's for filmmakers by filmmakers. So for people who aren't filmmakers, though, um, this is not a prestigious event, right? I, I think I think that that's kind of this is this is that we have we have people who are making these films who are you know on their second career in their forties in their fifties. And this is kind of a whole shift in their life. And they've been making films for a year and now getting on a screen. So I think something for me that doesn't get stressed enough is while documentaries are interesting, the making of documentaries may be more interesting. Yeah. You know, the whole process of why did this person find that person? You know, how did they raise the money? How did they how did they get what gear is necessary to do this? So I think that is also part of the intrigue with the AOD Film Festival is we're going to be talking a lot more probably than people would be used to about process. Right. Um, you know, because I think that that is an interesting element. How did you know how many how many days did you shoot this over? It's like, how did you gain their trust? Why? You know, why were you qualified to do this? Like trying to look at some of some more aspects like that. You get a little bit of that at festivals, but that really is what we're passionate about since we are filmmakers. So I think the audience will find that interesting. Well, I mean, as the critic, I find that interesting. But I mean, I'm glad you're doing this, man, because honestly, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I mean, and it keeps the art going. And I mean, which again, yeah. the day is the important thing. But I mean, honestly, you know, good luck on the weekend. And I mean, honestly, thank you for the time again, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, David. Appreciate your time. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>